Okay, let's go ahead and get this started. Um, this is the Garland Group webinar, which is an introduction to compliance, and we're going to use an analogy that we can all relate to, the game of football. So I think you'll find it very fun and interesting webinar. My name is Gay Connell, and I'm going to be your moderator today. Uh, but before we get started, let me just uh, give you a little bit of information on the format. The uh, webinar will be about 30 minutes long, and all attendees are muted, so please use the chat box to submit any questions or comments that you have during the webinar. And then at the end, we have an allotted time for a Q&A session, so we can hopefully get to all your questions. But if it, for some reason we don't have time for all of them, we promise to reply through email after the webinar is over. Also, we will be recording this webinar, so if there's any other people that you would like to share this with, we will have it posted, uh, the video recording posted on our website by the end of day next Monday. Uh, the webinar that we're doing today is a series that the Garland Group holds on the first Friday of every month covering pertinent topics for the banking industry. And our presenter today is Courtney Treadway with the Garland Group, who is one of our senior security consultants. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Courtney and get us started. Courtney, are you there? Here. Thanks, Gay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Great. Now, we should see here, everybody should have seen at least one slide change at this point. I just want to make sure that that's the case. Gay, are you seeing that on your end? Yes, I did. Okay. If you all have any technical difficulties during the broadcast, please, like Gay said, go ahead uh, and enter it into the, uh, the questions box, and we'll be sure to uh, get back in touch with you after. For the, the presentation, but it sounds like we're good. Everybody can hear, everybody can see, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah. So as you see here, here's kind of a, a brief introduction. I've been in the the IT industry now for about 15 years, been focusing on compliance, I guess, for I don't know, five, six, maybe even seven years at, at this point. Uh, and just so there's not any confusion, uh, my name is Courtney, but I am a guy. You see that there? It's uh, in the bulleted list. I, I am a dude, even though I have a girl's name, and uh, we have some clarification there for Gay's name as well in case uh, there was any questions. So that's just a brief introduction to who we are. Um, go ahead and give our contact information out at the end. Uh, so if you have any questions or anything at that point, you feel free to, to contact us uh, offline. Uh, a little bit about the Garland Group before we get started. Uh, the Garland Group itself was launched back in 1981. Um, at this point, we have uh, well over 100 financial institutions that we uh, perform compliance services of some form or another for. Uh, we're based in Dallas. Um, we provide both full audits, so we do both full IT audit reviews. Uh, we do various compliance services, and we also perform like IT security testing, like penetration testing, uh, vulnerability assessments, and, and so on and so forth. So just a little brief background on who the Garland Group is and uh, who we work for. I think most of you all at this point are pretty familiar with who we are, so we'll go ahead and scoot on past that. Uh, as Gay mentioned, the the, uh, the purpose of the presentation today is just a brief introduction into what compliance is all about. Um, and we're going to go ahead and relate it to the game of football. That's an analogy that uh, we came up with, trying to basically trying to explain to, to people who we've done training for in the past, and we've done this particular webinar a number of times, um, try and come up with an analogy that everybody can relate to. Because for a lot of people, compliance is kind of like a, a vague notion, or I'm not exactly sure what it's all about. So we came up with that analogy. If you have another one or a better one, uh, again, I'd love to hear it at the, the end of the, the presentation. Please contact me, and you know, we're always looking for ways to kind of improve the industry by helping people understand what it's all about in a little bit more depth. So the first slide we have here is what is compliance? Um, if you've ever been to an amusement park or something like that, you know, undoubtedly you've seen these little signs that say you must be tall to enjoy this ride. And that's kind of, in a nutshell, what compliance is. And we'll get into the football analogy here in just a minute. But that's kind of just, if I could capture it in one screen, that's kind of what compliance is all about, just trying to determine whether or not you measure up to the requirement that you are held to by law or regulation or by standard, and making sure that uh, you, you meet that in order to, to be able to participate in whatever it is, whatever industry uh, that you're in. Um, so most of us are familiar with the financial institution or the financial industry and that impact. So that's kind of what uh, this will be. That's what we'll focus on today. Um, but uh, just in case you weren't aware, financial institutions such as banks and credit unions and whatnot are regulated organizations by the government uh, that are required to meet certain federal regulation standards and that sort of thing. Um, 
some of these laws, some of the example of these laws is like the Graham Leach Bliley Act, the uh, Sarbanes Oxley, uh, obviously the FFIEC uh, regulations. Um, and then some of you guys are, are well aware with Dodd Frank that's coming down the pipe and that we'll all be dealing with here in the, in the very near future. Uh, examiners evaluate whether or not banks are meeting these regulations, and then firms like ourselves perform compliance scenarios that are, can come in and perform compliance services to help determine whether or not these banks or these credit unions are ready uh, to, to meet these compliance regulations, basically helping prepare the organization for, um, for these examiners to come in. Um, some of these regulatory bodies include the FDIC, uh, the NCOA, that's uh, who oversees you know, credit unions. You have the Office of Thrift and Supervision, uh, the OCC, the OTS. Um, the, you know, all, all these are designed, or all these are regulatory bodies that oversee their various types of banks and credit unions to, to help ensure that they are compliant. So who regulates who? Uh, you have the FDIC, they regulate your state chartered bank. You have the OCC, they typically are the ones that are reviewing your national chartered bank. Reviews your savings bank, and the National Credit Union Administration, they kind of oversee your credit union. So now let's get into the analogy that you guys are here for. Hopefully this will make sense. If you're familiar with compliance, uh, this might seem kind of basic to you, but at the very least perhaps this analogy will help you uh, explain it to other people who aren't familiar. You know, if you're trying to report to your CFO or COO or CEO or uh, maybe even just your friends and family trying to explain what it is that you do, uh, hopefully this analogy might provide uh, a little bit of help as far as that's concerned. So um, what we have here is a picture of a football game, and we have two teams that are lined up along the line of scrimmage. So you have your offense, who, in, as far as the analogy is concerned, can be thought of as the bank. Um, and then you have your defense, which you can kind of think of as threats, threats that are trying to prevent your bank from operating properly. Uh, as a bank, uh, you're lined up along the line of scrimmage, and what you're trying to do is to meet your regulation, uh, which is the, uh, yellow lar or the yellow marker there that you see. And you know, as far as football is concerned, it's kind of like your first down marker. That's where you're trying to get to. Or that's, where, that's kind of the, the, the process of compliance. Is you're at a particular location. And you're trying to get to another location in order to be compliant, in order to meet uh, whatever regulation it is that you're required to meet. So let's dive into this a little bit more. Um, you can kind of think as your auditors and your compliance officers as those who are measuring the progress along the field. They're the ones trying to determine, okay, has the, has the bank uh, achieved their first down or have they even scored and, and that sort of thing. And so these auditors and compliance, are, and compliance officers are going to periodically throughout the year be performing all sorts of different reviews, depending on the, the regulation or the framework that you're trying to meet. Um, they'll also use certain tools and stuff to measure that uh, to help facilitate the process. And so you can kind of think of uh, the, the chains. When you're watching a football game, they'll often say, hey, we're bringing out the chains. And that's to measure whether or not the football has moved far enough or the bank has moved far enough in order to achieve that first down. And so auditors, compliance officers, even examiners will use tools to do that at the Garland Group. Uh, an example of one of those is risky, but there are a number of other applications out there that will help facilitate that process. So moving on, you kind of have to get into terminology. What does this mean? What does that mean? How does that relate to our analogy? And so we've got a kind of a grid here to help facilitate that process. So sticking with our analogy, um, you've got the football analogy column on the left-hand side. Uh, those of you who are uh, clients of the Garland Group, the, the risky terminology in the middle column might kind of help clarify this. But those of you who are just uh, involved in other industries or in the financial institution but not or haven't used the Garland Group services before, hopefully that column on the right will help you. So if you can kind of think of your 10-yard increment, um, those are kind of like a higher level view of your amount of progress. And so it's not a yard by yard comparison, it's more of kind of a, maybe kind of a bird's eye view of what kind of progress you're making. So when you're dealing with risk key, those are going to be your assessments or your individual risks that have been identified. And then if you're just dealing with the, the industry as a whole, you're going to be looking at, um, you know, some will call those risks, uh, some will call those potential gaps or threats, um, some will call them identified risks, so on and so forth. Then as you kind of move closer, where you're getting into a little bit more granular review of what's taking place, those can be thought of as your individual yards. And so in order to get a first down, there are 10 yards, 10 individual yards that you have to pass in order to get there. And so that's going to be a little bit more granular review. 
Um, in risk key terminology, we refer to those as objectives. In the industry, you'll see those referred to as control, those control objectives, audit steps, so on and so forth. Uh, then there's the actual first down line or the first down marker. Um, and that in, you know, in risky terminology is kind of like your standard uh, as far as the industry is concerned. These are the various frameworks of the standard, the laws, uh, you know, whatever rate of sort of requirement required to, to meet. And it, even abstracting or even getting outside of the, the financial institution uh, or the financial industry, uh, there are all sorts of other uh, regulatory frameworks out there that actually aren't enforced by government, but um, you know, like quality control is a great example. So you have the ISO standards, and so uh, those are going to be the things that you're required to meet in order to you know achieve certain quality objectives. Uh, and then yards to go. So let's say that it's third down, and we need three yards in order to get our first down. Um, so what what's happened in that case then is you have the auditors and compliance officers who have come in, or maybe even federal examiners have come in and evaluated how much progress your bank has made and determined that in order to keep going, uh, there you need to get those three additional yards in order to get the first down. And so in risky terminology, this comes down to uh, these are going to be your recommendations. And again, in the industry, we see these referred to as a number of different things. These can be called findings. They can be called gaps. They can be called uh, directives, issues. Um, you know, you see them referred to as a number of different things. But again, sticking with the analogy, basically what that means is um, you know, if I'm, if I'm your compliance officer or if I'm your internal auditor and I make a recommendation, it's kind of like saying, okay, it's third down and there's three yards to go, or it's fourth down and you have one yard to go uh, in order to keep uh, progressing. Um, and then the, the last one here, is sticking with the, the analogy, is kind of your, your overall game plan. So this is going to be kind of your, your policies, your procedures, uh, whatever sort of mitigating strategies you have in place in order to help you to meet your goal. And so if I'm the bank, if I'm the offense, and I'm trying to meet my specific goal, like I'm trying to get to that first down or I'm trying to score a touchdown, this is going to be whatever plans, policies, procedures, uh, um, things that I have in place in order to try and overcome those obstacles or in order to overcome the, the defense. So in risky terminology, we call those safeguards. Those are going to be your protections, the things that mitigate risk. Uh, in the industry, you have mitigating factors, strategies, protections. You know, again, it's whatever you. I mean, this is, it typically varies from bank to bank, from credit union to credit union, or from organization to organization. But hopefully, you start to kind of get the idea. So you've kind of got your bird's eye view that moves down to a more granular level, which is kind of your individual yard line. Um, you know, the first down uh, line is again just kind of the whatever uh, marker you're trying to, to meet or get to. Yards to go would be your recommendations, and then your overall game plan is whatever strategies you have in place to try and protect from risk. Um, so hopefully that enlightens, or hopefully that that kind of clarifies a, a few things here. If you've got questions, which I'm sure we do, uh, go ahead and hold on to those. We'll get to those here in just a couple minutes, um, and I'll and I'll open it up for, for any clarifying questions that you guys may have. Um, so I want to move on from there to methodologies, and so. There are different ways to go ahead and ensure or to measure that compliance, or to measure your level of compliance. And there's what we call at the Garland Group kind of a traditional methodology, and we offer these. This is where you kind of come in, and at a point in time, you know, you might spend a couple days or a week or a few weeks on site trying to determine your particular level of compliance with a, you know, with the framework or with, you know, a regulatory or with a regulation. Um, the problem with these, though, as you guys are well aware, is that you'll spend the, the week or two before the examiner show up or before the, your audit firm or compliance firm shows up or before your internal auditor or internal teams begin their work, and you'll ramp up. You'll try and put together all this documentation, try and make sure all the controls are in place, and, and do all these things, which actually helps. It helps lower the level of risk. But then after they leave, everybody kind of takes a deep breath, uh, control kind of go back to their original state, and then the overall risk, the organization kind of starts to elevate again as these controls are not brushed down like they were during the review um, and not look at that harder. Uh, help to review those We're being component of that. We've been doing it for Courtney. Courtney, this is Gay. Can you hear me okay? I can. All right, your phone you hear me? is cutting out. Yeah, it, it was just cutting out a little bit. So just repeat what you went over previous to this. You're back clear now. Okay, great. So I apologize, guys. Um, 
what I was saying is that in terms of methodologies, you have kind of a point in time or your traditional uh, review. And in this, basically what that means is, um, or when we refer to traditional at the Garland Group, what we're referring to is kind of your, your one-week increment or your couple-week increment or maybe a couple days where your compliance or audit team comes in and reviews controls and then moves on. Or your examiners come in and they review your controls for a week or a few days and determine whether or not you're compliant and then move on. The problem with that uh, is that that process where you're ramping up, preparing for that review, you actually get all the controls in place that are supposed to be there, all the documentation is looked at like it's supposed to be. But then after the review team leaves, whether that's the Garland group, whether that's your federal examiners, your internal team, um, then risk tends to return to its previously elevated state. So while it lowers during the review process because everybody's dotting the I's and crossing the T's, uh, it will raise after that review period. Did that come across OK, Gay? Are you still able to hear me? Yeah, no, you're good. OK. And so what we've seen over the last couple of years, is we've seen some bigger banks adopt this. I think Wells Fargo had a release a year or two ago um, that they were adopting a strategy. It's one that we have been a proponent of at the Garland Group. And that's the next slide. And that refers to continuous compliance. And so the idea is, rather than spending all this time and all these man hours trying to ramp up uh, prior to a review, um, is try to come up with a, a improved, a streamlined process that allows for compliance to be more continuous. And so rather than dealing with these peaks and valleys of risk, depending on what time of the year it is, who's reviewing what, you know, who's looking at what, kind of come up with a measured process that allows you to kind of smooth out those hills and valleys. Now, not all risks will be able to be mitigated, but if you put this process in place, and Risky helps facilitate this process, and there are others out there as well, and they will help you kind of smooth that out. And so you're not doing this big ramp up or ramp down by kind of maintaining or having the right tool in place or the right processes in place. You're able to, at any point, you know, your your audit uh, your audit committee or uh, you know senior executive management team or, or what have you can say, show me the risk here. And because you've been using this particular process or this particular strategy, uh, you have been able to or you you know exactly what's going on. And so with risk key, what you're able to do is when you you know you assign a, a risk to a particular review schedule and you continually upload the documentation and everything is just kind of maintained in this one place. And so at any point in time, someone can say hey, show me what that risk looks like and why it looks that way. You're able to produce a report and show the documentation uh, as to why that is, rather than having to go scramble all over the place and check emails and check reports out of a bunch of different systems. Uh, and so that's one of the one of the methodologies that uh, we're a big, uh, big fan of. And we see the industry kind of moving in that direction. Uh, much like years ago, for those of you who are in IT security, uh, used to you would do just one penetration test once a year. Well, now you have your penetration test, you have your intrusion detection and prevention systems that are continually monitoring, they're probably performing, you know, semi-annual or quarterly vulnerability assessments. And so we see continuous compliance kind of as the, the maturing process of compliance. So rather than just doing a point in time, we're maintaining continuous compliance. And so we're kind of a we're we're big fans of that. And we see that uh, as kind of where the, the future is headed. So uh, I think that should be just about it. We can go ahead and uh, provide a little bit more clarity here in terms of different frameworks that you might be dealing with. Uh, the FFIC obviously is kind of the, the overall um, kind of oversight body for most of your financial institutions. I don't know if I explained that particularly well at the beginning, but the FFIC is kind of made up of the OCC and the OTS and the NCOA, and all those different regulatory bodies came together and formed an overall kind of guidance structure, which is referred to as, referred to as the FFIC guideline. Um, and in terms of the industry, you know, that relates to your financial industry purpose is over on the right. It's to regulate, uh, regulate risk in financial institutions. And again, sticking with our just kind of brief introduction to compliance here, uh, I picked out a, f a couple other frameworks here. You can see these here. So COVID stands for Control Objectives for IT. Uh, that's put out by uh, the uh, ISACA organization. And um, you know that's, that's for multiple industries, and it helps me measure your risk in terms of uh, you know, IT business purposes. It helps kind of provide some sort of value measurement for what your controls, your IT controls are getting for you. SOX, as we're all familiar with, it obviously covers financial industries, um, and that's designed to help improve accounting controls and auditor independence. And then ISO 9000, you see that across a whole bunch of different industries. And that's uh, another example of a framework, and that kind of meets quality control. But if you can think of it, again, going back to our football analogy, each of these basically are basically yard markers. You know, am I meeting the FFIC requirement? Have I have I achieved my first down? Um, am I am I uh, meeting what COVID asked me to meet? So you know, am I am I 
improving? Am I moving down the field and so on and so forth? So hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity for you. Hopefully that analogy will help explain to you know your coworkers and to your uh, supervisors and managers and, and all of um, you know kind of what compliance is all about, what auditing is all about, why we do it the way that we do. Uh, and so now what I'd like to do is go ahead and open it up to, to any questions. I know Gabe pointed at the beginning, but again, you have that chat box, or the, the questions dialog box that you're able to submit questions. And so if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to go ahead and, and ask. And I guess at, at this point, I'll turn it over to, to Gay. Gay, are there, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, there is. Thanks for that um, presentation, Courtney. You did a great job. Um, there is one question here. It says, do certain compliance methodologies work better with certain frameworks? Okay, so what I'm guessing, the, what, what is meant by that question is, does, does traditional work better for some frameworks and maybe continuous compliance work better for other frameworks? Um, and that, uh, I would say, is, is highly dependent on the, the organization because it's going to depend on the, the processes that you already have in place, the amount of staff you already have in place, or the uh, the relationships you have established with individual audit firms. Um, we think at the Garland Group the continuous compliance probably works best from an FFIEC standpoint, but again, that's going to be kind of dependent on the, the resources um, that you have available to you, the resources you have in place in terms of you know people, uh, you know staff, tools, and, and that sort of thing. But that's a, that's a great question. What else do we have okay. today? Anything else? Yeah, there's another one here. Um, of the frameworks you mentioned, which one do you find the most onerous to work within? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's also a good question. Um, you know, that that is probably going to depend on the, your level of expertise that you have uh, and how familiar you are with it. Um, I would say of the frameworks that I've dealt with, SOX is probably one of the most onerous, and that's just because um, uh, of the, the sheer amount of uh, paperwork that goes into it, um, you know, proving up controls. Uh, you have to, you know, in some cases prove up you know, 20 percent, and so that can be like, you know, weeks or months worth of reports and, and paperwork. And so uh, I would say personally that's probably one of the, the more uh, uh, stringent that I've, that I've had to deal with. But um, again, I imagine that's probably going to depend on your own personal experience and, and expertise. So those are, these are good questions, guys. Keep them coming. Gay, do we, uh, do we have any others? No, those are the only two. Um, I can go ahead okay. and just add a few more comments, and then if another one comes up, I'll get to it. Uh, but just, okay. again, I wanted to remind everyone that we are recording this webinar, and if you wanted to show this football analogy to anyone else in your organization, uh, you can find it on our website, uh, www.thegarlandgroup.net, and there will be a recording of it, so you can just play that for them. Um, and a reminder that we will be holding another webinar on Friday, August 5th at the same time, 11 a.m. Uh, we will be putting that on our webinar, I mean, on our website as well as far as when we determine the topic and give you an option to register. So I think we'll go ahead and conclude the webinar. Thanks, Courtney, for the presentation. You did great. And we appreciate all your time and hope that you found this very valuable.